you two, I was putting, you two, I was putting away the papers. You two, you two. <laughs> yeah. I was putting what, away the papers. What kind of papers? <laughs> Homie, oh, this shit. is not the kind of movie to be doing that stuff oh, right shit. now, okay, hey, man? Hey, man. Oh. We're just talking about papers oh, right now. Oh, God. Is he, is he snitching on himself? You know my papers! I know nothing! You know oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> <It's right. laughs> hello, hello, hello everybody! Welcome to another episode of WP Talks. I am your boy, Timothy K, aka Wolf Guy. You already know what it is. Featuring with my co host, Mr. Alex Correa. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a special guest. We have a lot of energy today. Our man, a high potency brother. Yes. Jason. Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> So excited, bro. So excited. Welcome, ole, welcome to uh, ole, ole, ole. <laughs> welcome to uh, WP Talks, my guy. Yo, how do you, how does it feel? How does Dude, it feel to be here, man? It's crazy, you know. Like I, I saw all the videos you posted. Oh, did you? I, I didn't you watch did? them. I didn't watch them, but I, <laughs> okay, I did, just say that. I did. <laughs> you could have lied for right now. <laughs> all right. Yeah, no. Yeah, definitely. No, no, like, reels though. No, I did. <laughs> I, did, I did watch. I did watch some of them, and then. I, I was really excited. Like I had to do my research, you know. Yeah, had, of course, dude. He had to see. I gotta do my boy You justice, know, and so uh, after doing your research, what was your favorite episode, Jason? Ooh, probably, probably, probably the, the Haunted Mansion one, just because of my. What the fuck? You know, what? It's because of my boy. It's because of my boy Moy. All right. Yeah. Boy, okay. Right, respectable. Respectable. All right. Respectable. All right. Do you want to introduce yourself, Jason? By the way, that is gonna be your camera, and that is the wide camera right there okay so right. go ahead and explain who yourself are who you, are man? you buddy Ooh, okay that's a big question yes sir I, i'm jason rivera i have been acting for a while now mostly oh. on stage but recently i've been doing a lot of exciting stuff i've been a spokesperson for chevrolet socal chevy what's up Woo! and i have also been doing a few short films i've been doing some stunt work as well which okay is cool a lot of a lot of exciting stuff, and I'm also doing a play. Okay. I'm doing a play down in Long Beach, a Shakespeare play. So go yeah. ahead and check it out if you can. That would be sick. Uh, yeah. Is it, is it is Long it, Beach Playhouse? Or is it Long Beach Playhouse? It's Long Beach Playhouse. not yeah. Long Beach Playhouse. I thought it was, but it wasn't. It's, oh my it's god. Not, it's it's uh, the Shakespeare Long Beach Shakespeare Company. Company. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Right. I see. I see. And what 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 character are you playing? Then? I play Camillo in The Winter's Tale. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. How do you like it so far? It's sick, dude. It's dope. It's definitely been able to. I've been able to play with so many different things, especially having trained in acting for so long mm -hmm. and being able to get this opportunity to be on the stage in a professional like world and be able to play with all that and with like the comedy the drama just like mixing it all together and finding that like inner like i don't know that inner beauty of it yeah 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 so yeah, yeah. it's been really interesting and really fun that's so, dope man, that's, that's dope. what shakespeare's all about man uh, i think that's it's all, it's all about it's a great opportunity yeah, right. yeah you missed our last episode and that gave us a beautiful excerpt from yeah. a shakespearean Thing that oh, yeah. I, 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 we're not gonna peer pressure you. You were not gonna, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, all right. But in case light. you what have light. a what light through yonder window breaks, it is the east, and Juliet is the sun. That's all I got. Oh, <laughs> what you guys always? <laughs> what this is a new segment? I'm no, like Shake spirit out, moment, Shake spirit man. out. I want to see what your best. Shit, I want to see what your best monologue man, that you just, have. Just give me like five it. minutes and I'll got you. Man's is like gonna you. start crying. He's gonna be like, why? <laughs> Not by yonder. Come forth and, and fight me. Um, today, guys, we are gonna be talking about a movie that uh, I think a lot of people had anticipated. A lot of people were also very worried at the same time yeah. uh, because it has a very deep and dark umbrella uh, hovering over it mm -hmm. with the logo DC on top of it. <laughs> uh, I think we all are more than aware that DC in this moment is not on a very good run. Honestly, besides the Batman movies and besides the Batman like Joker thing, mm -hmm. I don't think that um, this 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 movie has ever been like a really like intrigued people who have never heard of this character. True, man. Yeah, and yeah. and, like, and, and I, was it, a, I was a big DC reader growing up. Really, I, were I, you? I mostly read DC comics, and like 
obviously I love both Marvel and DC, but growing up, DC Comics was where I was reading most of it. That's crazy. And I didn't even know about Blue Beetle like that. <laughs> I really Dude, didn't. yeah. No, honestly, like, watching Blue Beetle, I, I honestly didn't even know the main character was Hispanic because he's always had the mask and stuff on. Yeah. Like, and the, the, the costume he wears is so alien form yeah. that it's like, how could you know? Right. Like, I've always just thought, because in, in Justice, I've only seen him as, like, you know the blue beetle. That's beater. right. He wasn't. And, and so I'm like, I'm like, I've never actually seen him without the suit. Mm-hmm. I've always just seen that character as that. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I didn't know who was under the mask, what they look like, if they were even human, right? Or if they were an alien. And I think that's it, it, it's pretty tough to to do that. Um, but yeah, besides the Batman movies and the Joker movies, DC is not really just that. Yeah, it's just going. But then down. again, like, what's that one? Uh, by James Gunn, Suicide Squad. Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad did do solid. good. I liked solid. it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I liked it. I think uh, the other Suicide Squad as second, well. The second the Peacemaker. One. That second one's better. Yeah, the yeah, second yeah. one the was better. One was, yeah, yeah. You know, was cool, James Gunn people... was the second, second one. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. With Peacemaker think, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah, star. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah a lot of people resonated a lot, uh, really well with that second one. Yeah. Um, but I don't think I ever realized how difficult it was to not only be the you know, and no, no shade to DC. Like, I, I, listen, guys. Let me we be love static. Sh- we love let me boys. be static <laughs> shot, guys. Um, but like, <laughs> but like, legit. I, 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 I never realized how hard it probably is to introduce a character that no one's really heard of. I know. And you, and we got to think about it as if we barely heard about it, most people around the globe really haven't heard but about it. But that also brings like a really cool opportunity to be able to explore a character that not many people will have expectations yes for. dude that is so true then they, yes. they go in with an open mind i know i did mm-hmm. i went in with a completely yeah. open mind and i was pleasantly surprised and that's yeah. pretty awesome and 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 i think honestly they they were shot down a little bit because the flash came out yeah. before and the flash <laughs> was a gigantic <laughs> flop oh. uh we had all been waiting for it and it just tanked that's a whole and i think story. because that was the first <laughs> summer project on, with bro. the dc umbrella it was like I think because of that, like literally any the DC name on top of Blue Beetle, people were already like, I I'll watch a review online rather yeah. than like go Re- buy a ticket. Regardless of uh, you know Ezra Miller's whole sh- regardless Black. of Black. of, really bad. of yeah, that, even with the yeah. just story, I think it just made it worse. Itself. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah, just, yeah. It was just bad. And yeah. I I just I I I honestly really do wish DC can figure it out because if i'm being honest dc is like the darker version of marvel and, and so they have some really cool they have lore. some cool shit yeah they have some really cool stuff james dude. gunn is gonna fix it all we hope hopefully, daddy james hopefully, gunn hopefully. decides to daddy james daddy james <laughs> please do what you did for guardians of the galaxy 3 bro uh jason i want to ask you how was your experience when you went to go watch it like was it was it fun was your theater crazy like what was it like spoiler free spoiler free spoiler free all right so when i went in it was actually pretty quiet at the theater i was in mm. except for the ending i will get more into that once we get yeah, to that yeah. point yeah, yeah, yeah. but that that ending uh there was a point in the ending where the theater kind of went a little crazy okay and i was a little surprised by it yeah. so yeah it's a story it's a story but uh <laughs> it was it was a it was. I was able to actually just take in the the film, just enjoy it, not have to worry about any distractions or anything like that. Just purely focusing on the film, on the story, acting, like like the cinematography of it, everything. Mm-hmm. And it, I was really able to enjoy it. Interesting. Like I okay. really liked the the use of the practical suit. Mm-hmm. That was probably one of my favorite things about the movie mm-hmm. that they finally get to use a practical suit instead of just CGI, yeah, nano, CGI. Yeah. nanotech, all nanotech, that type of stuff. Nanotech, all the stuff from Spider-Man. And yeah. just being able to see the the latino representation in it with the family and how big family is for our culture mm-hmm. so that that's what really surprised me and that's what i really enjoyed just for the free review of the okay movie. okay yeah, yeah, i like it that was that was a best review that was a really good wow jason and it was really guys and it was a guys, short, it was a short <laughs> okay i i, I, I like rehearsed this, this shit I mean, he man practiced this <laughs> in his mirror and was like <laughs> Will not He's fuck like, this up. They didn't the give me one. any lines for today. That was, I had to uh, we it actually own. wrote this exactly down, and this is our fourth take right now. <laughs> um, so, how is? Did you go by yourself when you watched this? I didn't. I went with Erica. Uh-huh. 
He wants his girlfriend, bro. Oh, yeah. wait, never mind. <laughs> uh, I heard that. I'm too late. He's like, he's like, yes. <laughs> another one. I got another one. I got another one. I, I failed. Not this time, buddy. I failed. But I, failed. I did. I did. It's, it, you went by yourself. Went by How was your experience today. when you went by yourself? I To watch this. You know, I, I liked it. I, I think I was around people. I think this one lady was going to sit right next to me. And then, like, she saw, like, had, like, my, you know, already and up popcorn. I had, like, <laughs> I had the whole thing right before the movie started. I was like, all right, cool. That's how it works, bro. That's how it works. And I put it right there, and she was like, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> She's like, that's my like, seat. What the fuck? <laughs> then she sat over there. I was like, oh, cool. So it wasn't her seat. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, and I'm back over here and stuff like that. <laughs> no, but like, dude, I I think I had a good crowd to, to enjoy Did that you? movie. Nice. With. That's there really good. There were moments where I was like, wow. That, they almost made me want to cry because like, these and I did cry. Uh, spoiler alert! Spoiler, 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 spoiler alert! alert. <laughs> but, no, 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 for myself. Okay. Oh, <laughs> but there was moments where I was like, I, I heard like little kids like laughing, and mm. I heard like older people in the back just laughing. Nice. I was like, this is great. That's yeah. this great. is so like yeah. that's that community. Right yeah, there. that's yeah, the community. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's young and old. It's like uh, super freaking cool. Yeah, man. And honestly, uh, that's one thing I really do love about theaters is like me, 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 and my dad and his girlfriend when we go to watch these things like. One thing we really enjoy is just how when the theater is like alive, like uh, who's the lady that comes on every time the AMC starts? Oh, when we, Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. Kidman. <laughs> every single time Nicole Kidman. It is now relig like it is now instilled in our brains that everyone's like, woo! Oh, that's, yeah. that's what I forgot. They yeah. was just clapping dude, when that came dude, on. Dude, every single time, <laughs> and 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 we gauge, we we figure out how how do people how how lively is our is our audience that we're watching yeah. with yeah. based off of Nicole Kidman's thing. Because if everyone's clapping and wooing, we're like, oh, it's going to be lit in here. If no one does anything, we're like, okay, it's going to be a typical normal movie that we're mm -hmm. about to go watch. Um, and so and so, I think it's just great and it feels so good when you're in a theater and you're like, I'm here with people. Yeah. Like, we're all experiencing this together. Mm -hmm. And it makes, honestly, I think a bad movie be even better. Because that's true. That's true. Yeah. even if you disliked it, the idea of feeling what everyone else is feeling and seeing how it's affecting them makes you be like, all right, maybe I'm being too critical. Yeah, They clearly like it. Right. So what am I being so critical for if everybody else is clearly – like I'm not going to – I don't think I could be in a room full of people obviously happy and still be like – <laughs> but even if yeah. they don't end up liking the movie, then they, you you already have that, like being able to talk talk about how much you disliked it, yeah. and mm -hmm. you have that like yeah. togetherness right there. Yeah, and then you would have that togetherness right there. Um, well, it's definitely been fifteen minutes. I want to know. Spoiler alert! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just made him shit his pants right there. <laughs> Why are you hey, 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 guys, listen, I'm a little scary. Um, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Blue Beetle yet, go ahead and take yourself to the theater and watch it. Should have watched it on the $4 day, but uh, it's okay. Go ahead and support the film. All right, guys, so before, before I go ahead and ask these guys what their thoughts were, spoiler reasons, and why, why they like the movie, I do want to go over the synopsis. So I'm going to hand it to my friend Alex to read it. Alejandro! Yeah, let's mix it up this time. Let's go. I'm gonna put in action music and. Put an accent too. <laughs> oh, and wait. Can I use certain music for this or am I gonna get in trouble for that? Up to you, fool. Up to you. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, they gave me the. They said it was cool. Alright, and. See! Jaime Reyes suddenly finds himself in possession of an ancient relic of alien biotechnology called the Scarab. When the Scarab chooses Jaime to be its symbiotic host, He's bestowed with an incredible suit of art oh that's capable of extraordinary and unpredictable power. Oh my god! Forever changing his destiny as he becomes the superhero. Wow! Blue Beetle! Blue Beetle! <laughs> <laughs> I like I like this. All right, that guys. That was yeah, good. yeah. That was the synopsis, guys. Jason, I'm going to throw it to you. Go ahead and tell me the things you liked about Blue Beetle so far. All right. So, man, like like I said in my quick synopsis, mm -hmm. the whole thing about family was what really got me. I was really able to see like my experience with my family, how even in like tough times when 
when someone might pass away or when you got a bunch of shit happening in your life they're still there picking up the pieces with you they're helping you they they take you wherever you need to go and they're there every step of the way and mm -hmm. that's what was that's what i really liked about the movie yeah. how how i felt seen with that and then I also really like the use of colors that they had. Yeah, like, very I mean, vibrant. I might be biased because blue is one of my favorite colors. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, they okay. Had really, they had, bias. They had really cool colors. They, had, they, they did. They had, and especially like in the town in, uh, was it Palmera City? Very, that very that retro, was, like, retro, night. retro yeah, color. It gave retro, yeah. it gave also like, I don't know, it felt like I was looking at a mixture of Mexico City and like Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and LA, like all just mixed together. Yeah, all together. mixed into one like thing. Florida a little bit too, though. Damn. Nah, I don't know about Florida. Oh, I, I, I think I he meant like maybe like Miami a little bit. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. But like he hit it with the LA. All right, so you got that, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, I, that was, <laughs> it was really cool seeing like the houses there and yeah. like the yeah. houses that I grew up seeing in my in the family pictures from my from my family back in yeah. El Salvador and like things like that. It was just really cool mm -hmm. and obviously like DC isn't really known for their CGI use, how well it is. But honestly, this one was decent. It was decent the mm -hmm. way the way they made most of it look and flow, mm -hmm. and especially with the fight choreo. The fight choreo was like a was a mm. really nice surprise. Yeah, yeah. Being able to like, cause obviously like lately, fight choreo hasn't been the best in most movies, mm -hmm. except for John Wick. That that's a whole different. John Wick is not even in the same <laughs> bracket of anything. <laughs> but there, the fight choreo, especially with like the blades and like the hand to hand, I was really cool. Interesting. And seeing okay. that with the suits yeah. also, I, I really enjoyed that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, like I, main, I, I agree with a good majority yeah. of uh, what he said. I really do like. Like how vibrant it was mm -hmm. um i think uh because it is besides superman really uh you know the vibrant colors that they have in this dc mm -hmm. world are very fantastic uh, i i will admit the whole family portion is probably the main thing that sold me yeah. because i i i understand from my own family but like you know understanding the culture of how important family is i think from like the general consensus is Everybody agreed the main reason they liked this film is because they were very true to family. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Like, they were, like, yeah. on it when it comes to how important family is. And honestly, it kind of made me reflect how important family should be. Exactly. Yeah. Like, how yeah. close family should be in times of peril and times of strife and in times whether they're dealing with, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's just really cool. I think my main reason for liking it is because uh i got to see a different lens mm. of a life that I, I i know from you guys's point of view and i've seen it because i live in los angeles right yeah. um and so but i i'm not i'm not i'm not within it and mm. so it was almost like looking through a window of like okay so this is these are like like certain jokes and stuff like that i'm like oh okay how interesting and to me that's important because i'm like well it's important to see yourself reflected on a screen because I know how I felt when I watched Black Panther, and I know how I felt, <laughs> obviously. Like, I know how I felt when I watched these things, and I'm like, badass. <laughs> like, it's badass, bro. Like, yeah, no, and, and especially when they incorporate stuff in your childhood, I think Ooh. that really hits. Yeah. It's like man. the childhood stuff. Ooh, because now you're me. really like, oh, you <laughs> no, guys man. did homework. Like, you know, Ooh, yeah. you know they, specifically. Wow, they did their shit. Yeah, they did their they shit did for lot, that dude. dude and and i'm like i'm like when you hit like certain detailed aspects of people's childhood you already grabbed them right. yep. because they're like i'm invested you did your work to already bring me into nostalgia of just what this culture and life even is and i find it fascinating because honestly i feel like at this very moment mainstream wise i feel like you know i've seen a lot when it comes to the african-american community mm -hmm. i've seen a lot when it comes to the asian-american community and right now these are like everywhere almost everywhere right yeah. and i don't really get to see a lot when it comes to the latino community mm -hmm. at all unless they are a character within someone else's world mm -hmm. so i thought it was pretty cool to watch a whole movie that was fully centered around that yeah, definitely. so that yeah. that was my main main reason of liking it mm -hmm. alex I'm gonna piggyback off what you said with the CGI, right? Although I can say uh, that the CGI um, at first kind of felt like a video game. Yeah, yeah, I was one hundred. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, and I, and, I, and, I, and I was like, okay, if, if it goes like this, like my range is gonna go a little bit more down. But for some reason, it got better as 
like right to like almost the very very end mm -hmm. he got really good and yeah. i was like oh cool oh it's, yeah 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 so I, I i assume like you know all all the cgi money went to that scene that last those right last then, like, fights and i'm like I'm okay with that, but I'm like, dog, this looks like straight. This looks like CGI from the Meg one. Yo, 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 you just gonna keep, you gonna keep, yo, bro, yo, you already heard what my dad was gonna do to you, bro. Oh, man. Like, I hear nothing. <laughs> I didn't hear a Same single to thing. My face. Uh, I also wanted to say, uh, I really love the fact that the director was inspired by anime. Mm -hmm. uh, he was inspired really? by anime. That whole I definitely that whole gigantic that. Yeah. sword thing is think of it as like yeah. get you good sense. I'm not saying it right. Uh, but it's from Bleach, and yeah. Ichigo mm -hmm. has a big sword yeah. where he's like slap, and that entire thing was literally watching like. And to be fair, there's not a lot of like movies that are sort of like anime fighting mm -hmm. wild mm -hmm. with real people. Mm -hmm. So I thought that part was uh, really cool how they could be inspired by you know that aspect sure. of yeah, it man. and stuff. So sure. the the fighting was really cool. Um, I will also say, I think I really only like George Lopez's character mm. because to me I feel like it embodied what the story like the world that it was the script that it was I feel like he was on the level of what I was expecting yeah, I when I that. started I watching this for sure and, and I guess George Lopez is, is an easy person to uh, I think he was uh, placed in that movie very well yeah for yes sure. for sure I think I don't think many other actors could have played that. I think I think they could have, you know, anybody played like I don't know, but I think they did a good job on that, and especially the character because like man, right. I, when I was watching that character, like uh, the you know the the Mexican rockero, uh, like that's that's what the rocker dude, you know, that's yeah, the Mexican rocker, and and to me I was like man, that's uh like. Cause like you know, I was like, that's that's Moises' uncle right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's Moises' uncle right, right there. Right. 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 The Tacoma and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, what the fuck? It's, so it's it. There's a lot of moments where I was like, dude, I know that person. I know this right. person. Like, um, there's they they were introducing like us like like. Childhood TV shows like mm. in that one small area. Yeah, we're talking about yeah. Chapulín. I had to literally text like I had to ask Alex, and I was like, because I started understanding why my white friends asked me to go with them to watch the Blackening oh, because I realized, because I, I was like, go watch it yourself and figure it out. Don't be racist, guys. And then I realized, oh, they, they don't understand help. the cultural joke. Yeah. yeah, because I'm sitting in the theater, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> what? What is this? And I'm hearing other people laugh in the theater, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm not too sure, but I I, I think on some TikTok I, I saw that the uh, the security guard is <laughs> that's Chapulín Colorado. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a comedian or something, right? I think so. He's a I feel like I've seen yeah, that. He probably there, is. There was a uh, famous Mexican actor, the the one with like the I think it was the Ferrari or the Lamborghini that got smashed. Oh yeah. He he was he was a very like famous Mexican actor. I can't remember his name, so uh, I'm not gonna try. But <laughs> he's, I remember seeing him all growing up. Interesting. Crazy, is man. that a how do you say El El Chapulín? Uh, El, El Chapulín. El um, El uh, was he an El actual El claymation character or was it a mm. real person playing? It, it was a mixture. It was, it a, was a mixture. Yeah, mixture. Yeah. Oh, so, that's kind of cool. From what I remember when I was growing up as a little kid, my, my, my family, they would uh, raise us on uh, uh, three significant Mexican actors. It was Cantinflas, mm. so it was Mario, Mo Mario Moreno, yeah. uh, La India Maria, <laughs> and El Chavo del Ocho. El Chavo del Ocho, um, I think his name is Roberto Gane Gomez, mm -hmm. something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Bolani, I don't know. But he was El Chavo del Ocho, okay. and he also had, like, same crew, same, like, actors yeah, and everything. Yeah. In like the Mexican like superhero TV show where he just like you know dressed up in his like red suit with the CH and he's like a chapulín which is basically a grasshopper. Whoa, okay, yeah, cool. Wow, cool. yeah. <laughs> what and the he's fuck? Just, like, fucking funny. He would like drink a potion. He gets super small. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. So what was the other TV show they kept saying? El, which one? Oh, oh um, Maria, Maria. Del yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what was that one? <laughs> yeah, that one is like a novella. It's yeah. a novella about like this. Uh, Interesting. I see it. I see it in Korean dramas too. Mm -hmm. So in Korean dramas, you know, like the whole spiel where it's like the uh, broke uh, girl who falls in love with the rich yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That's basically you see that. It everywhere. You oh, see it everywhere. Oh, oh yeah. It's just yeah, that yeah, same yeah. trope oh, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they were just making a joke about him because it literally flops. Because yeah. yeah. he was the broke <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I see. There you, you go. Know, now you can laugh. Now you, can laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I, I know because I'm listening to you guys and I'm like, that's honestly so like. And, you know, move. 
I was, I was, I've been watching stuff because I, I read a lot of Fox News stuff oh, here and there. Whoa. Listen, I don't want to admit that, but I read, <laughs> yeah, I read a lot to read the comments. A little political. Huh? Shut, <laughs> shut up. Tim and, is a is an intellectual. Whoa. <laughs> um, but I, I, I do that because I, I, I'm trying to like under people. People were complaining about movies and strikes in Hollywood mm-hmm. and all that, and they're like, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Like, so what if it goes away? Yada yada yada. Even right. though I'm like, theaters and arts have been here since the beginning of time. Like, what do you do? You not want to be entertained for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I, my, my, uh, somebody, I think it was Johnny or somebody sent me something where it was showing why movies are important, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they were basically saying like, it's your way of seeing a perspective of life that either you can resonate with or you can learn about. Mm-hmm. And without that, you could possibly not know yeah. because unless you physically see it. You're not gonna read about it, so how would you know? And this movie is a way I would have never. You guys would have never uttered that th- those TV shows to me ever once. Nah, dude, but this nah. movie put it on a display to get me intrigued to be like, right. oh, what's that? Start to educate yeah. you, it, it makes you ask questions it's the fun. same way when you watch yeah. others. You know what I mean? You start yeah. asking. You're like, like, oh, is this really how this is? Damn, what is that? Oh, yeah, dude, what dude, do you that's mean? That's Static Shock right there, bro. Oh, my God. Whoa. So, if you guys didn't know, right, that's a Glock 16. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Cut but, the camera. Cut right? the camera. Cut. Um, but, uh, no, like, it, it's just pretty cool to be able to learn about different cultures in an entertaining way. Yeah. Right. And then, like, you know, that's becoming, like, the mainstream instead of all of us fighting to be in like one movie or like if we're lucky two characters in one movie no. and our stuff is sprinkled on there to overshadow by someone else is like oh we all have our own movies to like show all of this stuff that puts everybody on so everyone's collectively in an entertaining right. way not like in a class where they're like or someone has to like go sit down and be lectured like where you're like passively to expl- yeah, yeah can- they're passively yeah. showing us so i can ask you guys like dude what is that and then you're like, oh, dude, this is da-da-da-da-da. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. And then I go learn about it, and now everybody's, like, slowly getting on the same page, right? And then not even just, like, getting exposed to all that stuff, but, like, the people who grew up with that, like, me and Alex, like, being growing up with El Chavo del Ocho, especially for me, and Cantinflas, yeah, yeah, like, those yeah. are my main, man. And just being able to see that on the TV, on like the move big screen, Your movie. big screen, yeah. And then like I'm like, damn, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> and then you start getting all these memories. Yeah, and you, yeah. You want to like talk about it more, so it like makes you feel in tune with yourself and with the people that you talk to about mm-hmm. it. Got you, got you. So uh, I want to ask you guys now. Um, <clears throat> What did you not like Ooh. about this movie? Oh, because Easy, I'm gonna be Easy. real, I do have a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's okay. Okay, yeah, it happens. It All happens. right, do you want to go first? Uh, sure, I could go first. Uh, one of the things I was disappointed about was that they didn't play low rider. They didn't have George Lopez. Not what I thought he was gonna say. They didn't have George Lopez come out <laughs> when they gave him the tacos. <laughs> oh, damn, he's I like, he's that. like, oh shit. <laughs> they didn't have him come out and then be like, to be like, hey, that's a nice ride. And he's like, I know how. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's riding off like, pa 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 pa. I feel like that would have been too much on the nose for them to be like. <laughs> All right, guys. Watch they had an actual tape of that where they played that. I literally wouldn't be surprised. Dude, literally, I'm not gonna lie. George Lopez. I think every person in the 2000s just had have like one day where they woke up in the middle of the night and it's just that playing on the TV screen yeah, right hey, there. And I'm hey. just, and I'm just like and I'm just like. What? <laughs> and I just go back to sleep, and I'm just gone. But uh, what else? Uh, but, but like in all seriousness, though, the story was very cheesy. I must say, I was able to tell where everything was going. Yep. But I mean, I, it was expected, mm-hmm. kind of. Is it? I, it I, it's not supposed to be, but it, it's kind of become a little bit of a norm in a few in a few like major major like corporation movies like things like franchise movies like things like that mm-hmm. so uh that's one of the things that i didn't i didn't really like and then the acting as well it some of it was a little questionable yeah um mm-hmm. but that's just me being too like really out of, well hold on because i was told it. from somebody that uh because when i when I, I talked about this with a friend before um 
who comes from a Latino heritage, and he was trying to explain to me like you know acting in different regions are not the same as See, acting that, here. That's that's True. why that's why I was like being too analytical about it because yeah. I know like uh, some of the people that I was like more like oh well, what's this like I don't I don't really believe you here. Uh, I know that they're from like different countries or different areas even even within this country and with each area has a specific way of acting yeah, so yeah. I, I don't mean to be like too analytical about it but that yeah. was something I did notice but yeah. that's just that's just me that's yeah just me. of yeah. course yeah um Alex man sorry solo uh, what's his name solo solo yeah solo dude um I, 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 I was I maybe I wanted a little more you know, mm, I, I, that. I think I, I think that. there yeah. were moments where I was like, you know, this film kind of feels like it's uh, it was tailored towards. Um, uh, I I kind of saw it as like any anyone coming like, what is it, second generation or first generation? No, no, second generation. Second gen. uh, Latinos who yeah, yeah, like you know their parents yeah. came from <clears throat> over there mm -hmm. and they're over here, and you know the kids grew up here. Mm -hmm. So this is this feels like a movie for them right. mm. because they can relate to like these things, you know. Um, so when I was, I was giving him like, uh, I'm gonna call him Jaime because that's his character. Yeah. yeah. I was giving Jaime some like, uh, you know, some, you know, I, I would take it easy on you. I'm gonna take it easy. I'm, you know, you don't, yeah. have to, you don't have to be too, too much on the accent, but también was like, come on, bro. Mm. It's like, there are moments where I was like, ah, you, it just sounds a little too Americanized. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. And there were, there were oh. times where I'm not sure if this is the writing. Um, the writing was like he, and it's a super fun joke because they, like okay, so the joke is usually like in in most Mexican American movies they they use Spanglish like every other yeah word. Yeah, like, yeah come on man, and there was a specific moment where I was where I was like you didn't have to fucking like, say it right there yeah. come on bro. like literally the, like there was a moment where uh, you know like um in the where the dad was over here, like where the candles and all that, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, yeah, in the yeah, afterlife yeah, 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 in the afterlife. And the dad was talking to him in English, and then I don't know where the dad, like uh, uh, Jaime, talked back to him, but in Spanish. And then, and I was like, where the fuck are you speaking to him in Spanish? In that yeah. moment, like that, that's a moment where you don't have to speak Spanish. Right? Yeah, you know? right. there are moments where, like, for sure, speak Spanish, like by all means, like, cause that's like use that language when it's powerful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but if it's just for a for a uh, throwaway throwaway ah, come on, right. man. interesting so because I, I you you see that a lot in a lot of asian asian films as well that's mixing in with americans mm -hmm. because they and they do it a lot yeah because it's real um and 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 i i i want to say that my gripe with this movie really you know, I look at it from all forms of lenses, um, but as an actor myself, my number one lens is acting. Mm -hmm. And not a single one, like nobody, besides very rare moments when it came to, you know, George Lopez's character, because I, I, I'm like, he's being the overtop uncle who's crazy, is screaming and passing out. I'm like, I'm like, he's, 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 he's accepting his role for what it is, and he's, yeah. he's sticking to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody else just seemed like they were just overacting to me. And I didn't feel, I, I didn't feel, yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah, feel yeah. like, I didn't feel genuine. Now, I don't want to be that guy that's like, your acting is bad, and everybody's acting is bad. Because listen, you know, we're not on these big budget movies. We don't know what it's like or what we do as well. If we were on that, so I, I give him some slack. We're, he's young, just like how we're young, you know. Acting takes is hard, yeah. as you know. So I understand, but that doesn't change the fact that when I'm watching every single one of them, I was like, I don't believe any of you guys. Like I feel like I'm watching a very low tier superhero film. Like even when I watched Avengers and stuff, like I'm watching Robert Downey Jr. Gold man. Mm -hmm. I'm watching Mark Ruffalo Gold man. I'm watching Chris Hemsworth play Thor, gold man. I'm watching uh, uh, Heath Ledger play Joker, gold man. But I think it's because like it's like uh, those are very those are films that are like uh, uh, protagonists, like centralized on the protagonist. But it is centralized you know? over. It's but Blue like, Beetle. But Blue Beetle was like that's the family's there too. Like, yeah, that's, that's true. The entire that's time. A really big part of it's the story. that's it's true. Not like they're just a small part of it. Right. Do you part. think that hindered us caring for him more? Because instead of making this about Blue Beetle, we got Blue Beetle and friends. Honestly, I'm not complaining too much about the focus on family. Because mm -hmm. 
I don't know if it hindered it or if it elevated it. I'm I can't really decipher that. Hmm. But it definitely like it was Blue Beetle. I was seeing the whole family as a yeah. collective, as a one Blue Beetle, as like a whole. Just like the title that they yeah. have they that have title. the Blue Beetle title. The family saved it too. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. It did. Yeah. It they did. I will it. not. I will agree yeah. with you that although I did not like any of their acting, if it was just him. I would have yeah, already for sure. Yeah. For sure. For sure. If I'm being yeah. honest with you, man, I I genuinely fell asleep the second time. Damn. <laughs> and I and listen, Damn. I I've I've come to understand I watch movies all types of different hours. Yeah. yeah. When something captivates me, I'm captivated. Right. I follow Alex knows. You should know. Mm-hmm. I get sleepy around ten or eleven o'clock off rip. Um <laughs> I watched Parasite <laughs> at one o'clock in the morning. And I was Dude. wide awake. Yeah. I watched Elvis at 11 o'clock and didn't <laughs> even fall asleep once. And it ended at like 1 o'clock in the morning. And so I'm like, I'm watching this again. And I actually started enjoying it better the second time. So that's why I was genuinely confused. Why did I fall asleep? And I'm like, it's because my body just was like, mm, it's all right. It's okay. It's weird. I literally was like, I don't mind this as much as I did before. And then I knocked out. I told you, I watched this at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, it was the middle of the day. what moment were you like, I liked it more than the first time? It was the very beginning when everything was going. Okay. In the beginning. And I was like, I don't hate it as much as I did the first time this beginning. After the suit came on and he did the whole flying thing... I'm gone. I literally only woke up to my one favorite part in the movie. My favorite part of the movie was when they started playing that, uh, because I'm look, uh, damn, what's that song? Oh, uh, when he started, by Cypress Hill? Huh? By Cypress Hill. Yeah, yeah, fighting? yeah, yeah. That shit was and fucking when he was, hard, When he man. was fighting and he was like, that come on, and I'm just like, hard. <laughs> That's Blue Beetle. There we are. Oh, now I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, that sort of. Coming gangster, the slum. Yeah. This gangster music while he's fighting. And I'm just like, there we go. When they got that That's, Molly crew going on. Bro. Oh, man, that was yeah. cool Bro, too, I was lit. Look, second. Oh, I had another thing. Fa- uh, when the when the grandma pulled up Ooh. with the guns. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, dun, dun, dun. And she was like, real G. She a real G. That. Yeah. Let's go. And I'm like, hard. Hard. These are hard moments right here. If they could have just... I don't like. Should have heard the little kids laughing in that moment, dude. Okay, I, I, I have to take some stuff back now. Right. The grandma, I guess, would also be somebody that after, after the dad dies, after the dad dies, the grandma became my number one favorite character mm. because to me she became that hard ass. Yeah. And when she said, "Now we can cry," I'm like, Ooh, I'm that, like, I felt, that caught me I off felt hard. that. Yeah. I was like, I was like, there's the acting I was looking for this yeah. whole time that, because I'm like. You can hear that toughness literally, like, just leaving out as she's saying that. And it's almost like she's just going back to the nice grandma in the beginning of the movie. Right. Uh, and I'm just like, that was just, that, that those moments, it just sucks because it's like, it's like how you, how you were talking about in the Meg 2, or just how we watch other movies where you feel like the ending is just so strong. And a part of you likes the movie, and you just wish... Why couldn't it be this strong the entire time? Okay, yeah. Because if it was this strong the entire time, it would have been gold. It's clearly there. It's clearly there. It's obviously there. Yeah. Like, why couldn't you just hold on to that? Why would you save it all to the end? Because you've already lost me for an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. This movie was two hours and something minutes. I don't think this movie needed to be that long. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't think it needed to be they that long. They could cut out some parts. They could cut they out some fun. parts. Yeah. They didn't need any, ev- all, like, everything. Yeah. I thought the whole relationship with the girl that was forced. Was that felt very forced. forced. I'm like, I didn't hate it. That I, I didn't hate it. I was it like, ultimate Riz. I, bro. I was at a point. I was like, come on, let's get <laughs> Come on, you're stupid. Look at us. I was like, ultimate <laughs> Riz. You save the day. She goes from hostile to <laughs> give me your number. I'm like unspoken yeah, Riz. She wasn't, dude, unspoken he, Riz. He, bro. He, just, he just went outside. He just <laughs> lost his job. He was like, what to do? <laughs> Man's literally was like, Yo, she she was not looking at him for. No, I mean, that's nothing. what I appreciated. Yeah. She was looking for nothing, dude. And out of nowhere, she's like, oh, you remind me of my daddy because my daddy was yeah. Blue Beetle too. 
Come on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Come on. Go, go, wait, go, go I did not to, add to it. Come on, man. Going back to the daddy though. Uh, who do you think who do you think the, the original Blue Beetle was? I I Ah, I want it to be Eugenio Derbez. <laughs> Dude, that would be sick, but uh, from the pictures and from the voice, uh -huh. I feel like it's my good boy Ted Lasso, Jason Sudeikis. You think so? I think so. Why do you believe? Like I don't know. It just the the vibe of the original Blue Beetle with the pictures, like the pictures that were like True, portrayed, saw, yeah, yeah. and then the voice at the end in the in the credits. Scene, yeah, it I, it really I really think it's him. I really hope it's him because I I love that man. But Eugenio Derbez, that would be kind of fun. Here's my thing. I don't, I don't know because I, I, I didn't look at the picture too long because it was like it was probably there for like three seconds or two seconds, yeah. very quick. I don't know what her, what, yeah, what are her, her, her mom, her dad? Are they like, are they both Hispanic? Uh, they said that she was Brazilian. Yeah. But the, the dad, like, obviously he. Comparing comparing the relationship with like the, the, the bad villain, guy, the villain, well. she was white. She was white. So the the father also has to be. I think so. White. Yeah, he so, has so to be. So we can't be with Hindu little bits. Pero we love you. We, but love, we, you love, you. we love you. We love you too. <laughs> you know something I thought was really cool about them explaining the Blue Beetle thing as well is that they said he never unlocked it, right? Yeah. Because in the old comics, like it wasn't like a superpower, right? Mm -hmm. He was sort of like a Tony Stark with a very Blue really Beetle cool. really cool. with high tech yeah. stuff. And I always thought that was cool because I'm like, wow, it really shows the evolution of, you know, what, the, like, he's the true Blue Beetle, mm -hmm. right? He was, he was the formal superhero of Blue Beetle like Batman is, but, like, he's, like, the real Blue Beetle, and I thought that was really cool. I do think the way he got the powers was a little forced, just a little bit. Dude. Just because I'm like, this high-powered scabbard. I'm sorry, even if I could get caught, I'm not going to give this <laughs> to some random guy and a cheese, you know, cheeseburger thing and say, just don't open it, bro, and I'll get it later, man. <laughs> and then I walk out the door. Why would I trust you? To not, <laughs> why would I trust you to not? Oh, I don't know you, bro. Am I going to trust my dad's legacy? She was just like, he's so pretty. He's so pretty. No, no, no. no. Like, she was like, you're stupid. Even then, <laughs> even then, yeah, she was like, she was like, dude, he's dumb. Like, she don't even give a shit about him. But. And so, and so I'm like, I'm, and, and, and another thing is I'm like, bro, I'm sorry. If the scabber did that in your body, bro. You went up dead. his ass, man. Dog. It, it went, dude. Bro. <laughs> it went up his ass, bro. But hey, can, can we just say that fucking transformation that, was cool. That was, it was, that was really so cool. yeah, I can't, dope, bro. I can't hate on it because it would look fucking sick. Yeah. Oh, it was like, awesome. There was like, imp, like horror in it. Yes, while it was. Also being like it, was yes. it was. It was. It was. So something you guys probably did not pick up and something I'm sure you guys did not pick up. Uh. So there's an obvious reason. So the scabbards, right? In Scarab. case you, Scarab, sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, the reason you don't, like, technically these are world-ending weapons, right? Yeah. Technically, when it gets a host, it's supposed to make you evil. So that you destroy the planet. Uh, because all that you're doing when you turn into it is preparing that planet for destruction. Makes right? sense. You didn't notice, but in the beginning, you end up seeing one of the other ones. Because there's multiple different beetles. Like, you, in the beginning of the credits, they show different colors, right? The green so there's a green, the green there's a green beetle. There's a, there's a, there's a yellow beetle. There's a, there's oh a, there's a black God, beetle. Yeah. Like, and they all have different powers. Yeah. Um, but you didn't notice that one of them hit the other one. And we're using that as a theory that that's why it malfunctioned and it didn't turn him into an evil person. Interesting. Oh, because because shit. theoretically, if it had just stayed the course, it should have turned him evil. But because it got hit by the other one, yeah. they said it because there was a little green electric shock in it, and they said it would malfunction, Ooh. which is why when it attached to him, it didn't turn him evil, and it almost was basically just saying it was here to protect his host. I like that. Instead, I like yeah. yeah, and also cool. it was showing Easter eggs to show, let us all know. People didn't notice it because I think it looked like just a bunch of random colors. Yeah. But like, those are different beetles being already thrown into our world. I also, I also saw a theory that the green light that was passing by that one was supposedly Green Lantern. I'm curious because I'm like, there's still a green beetle. That's so what I, was I assumed there was that green, green beetle. beetle. Yeah. I don't think they were throwing Green Lantern yet. I also enjoy that right now they're really keeping it very low on mentioning any other characters in the world. Yeah, they cool. mentioned Batman and Superman. That's it. Once, and, and, once. and once. And they never showed a cameo yeah. of them. They never showed an after credit. And I'm like, that's what DC keeps messing up on. They keep throwing characters in way too quickly. Like, when we yeah. watch the first, the reason why people are mad at Marvel right now. 
is because we're getting an over influx of stuff. Yeah. It's just nonstop characters back to back. When before like all, all the TV shows, like, I all the TV even shows, Secret Invasion yet. Dude, yeah. I did. Trash. <laughs> it started good and it's trash. But look, when we you used to watch Marvel, we got yeah. maybe two movies in a year. And we'd be so hyped. We'd and be we'd so be so hyped because we had to wait. Yeah. We had to wait. We have to wait for another Captain America. We have to wait for another Iron Man. We have to wait for another Thor. Like, we have to wait for these movies, right? And so I'm like, DC just rushes because it's almost like they're racing themselves where they're like, all right, even though we're literally just showing Blue Beetle, let's just throw Superman somewhere in there and show him. (laughs) No, that overshadows him. So I'm really glad they only kept it to just some words and stuff. Um, Before I ask you guys uh, what do you think they could have done better, I do want to ask you, did you think they overdid the uh, sort of like what they were showing when it comes to Latino heritage and oh. show? Like, do you think they overdid it to a to a degree where you like, all right, you guys are like feeding me. Like, I get it, mm. I get it, but like you're feeding mm. me too much. Like, I chill. To an extent, to an extent, I feel like they might have they were leaning into it a little too much, hmm. but. I also wasn't complaining too much because yeah. of it felt natural because like in our daily lives that's how we talk with our family that's how we that's like the cultural references that we make that we think about so it wasn't it wasn't uh, too much of an issue for me okay yeah Alex? Mm-hmm. well I'll tell you, I'll tell you this much man <laughs> uh, they were pushing out a lot yeah they like, were pushing a lot. a lot there were there there were there were songs there were plenty of songs. Plenty of the music selection for the show. It was good. Movie was really good though. But it was a lot. Yeah. There was maybe a little bit too much for my taste, just because I'm like, hey, if you're gonna introduce us, introduce us like with, with a good amount, right? Uh-huh. It was to me, it felt like a, an overflow. It was like it was just like, hey, let's see what, what sticks. Mm. It feels like they just threw a whole bunch of, of, of what's good, and we will be like, we know, uh-huh. we know. And they just like George Lopez had like a couple, like maybe like four or five songs. I was like, oh, that's a good song, that's a good song, that's a good song. And then Selena, and I was like, oh, that's a good song, you know? It's like, it's cool, but it's just like, you can do more than just do that, man. Yeah, I, I definitely, you know? I definitely see that. And, yeah. and, and, and it's it's not just the songs, it was like, uh, maybe it was just the songs. It was just a re- <laughs> like small little references here and there. And I was like, it's cool. And But then I was kind of concerned, because like, there was moments where I was like, if they put all the Mexican references, or like just like Latino for reference, references in general, into this Blue Beetle, uh, what are they gonna do for the rest of the films? Are they just gonna like? And that's what pick I was gonna up from say. The yeah. yeah, that's what I was gonna sure. say. Cause I'm like, sure. when you do like, you know how we talked about a Barbie too, right? Um, I'm like, when you show such a, the difference between I guess Black Panther and certain of these movies is like their whole character basis is built around an entire world yeah. where their culture is a part of the superhero ness of it, like it has to be. And so, therefore, all of those same cultural vibes stick no matter where you go, right? I'm like, if you make a Blue Beetle 2, do you now just negate all of it Mm -hmm. so that you can be like, all right, we need to start honing in on Blue Beetle himself now Um, and not as much as, like, do you just strip that? Do you keep going with that? How how long can you keep going with that until you start? start to be like, all right, we have to wean off of the, like, my, my problem with the family is that they were such an important part that I'm like, well, what continue. happens when yeah. they're not Blue Beetle? Yeah. They're not. They're not part of this. Damn. And so when do we get, now you're going to make people get attached to these characters to just shoo them in the corner because Shit. that's what happens to all characters in single movies that are attached to the main character. You don't get to be there when they're having the big super meetups and stuff mm. because you're not the superhero. Pepper Potts. So, huh? Pepper Potts. Pepper Potts, but like, I wouldn't really, really consider. There. Yeah, like, like as I said, like unless you're saying one of these characters are gonna be also another superhero, in the end of the day, these people are not here. They're not gonna be here. No. You know, they're letting the uncle be a part of the business, but he's not gonna be there. He's not part. He's not the superhero. When do you rip that away from people? Because people are now going to be like, especially the older people are going to be like, I really liked seeing myself on screen, mm, still being a hero, That's gonna being suck. a hero, be seeing weird. my family yeah. be heroes all together. That's and now you want to rip that away to go back to the standard, 
Oh, there's the white superhero. There's the millionaire superhero. All the yeah. all the Hispanic stuff that you were having before. Now you're just throwing it away, yeah. and it's all gone. None of that's mentioned anymore. It's just it's almost like he's not even. It doesn't even matter mm-hmm. um, anymore. Uh, and I'm like, when you overdo something so much, it kind of like, you know, it's just like Barbie. They put such a strong message. How do you make a Barbie two yeah. that's not? A strong <laughs> message, because now it just looks like like a dumbed down movie. You can't it, you can't yeah. do that and expect the audience to just be okay with it because that's not what they asked for. It's not what they got in the first place. Um, do you guys think it deserved the box office that it got? I don't know what it got. What did it? Get? It flopped. Did it, get? it so at this current it, moment, I know it passed the the prop the the no budget no, the budget that they had. Really? They they just passed it they recently did? a few days uh-huh. ago. Um so. Basically, so far, uh, Blue Beetle is at eighty-one million. It oh. cost hundred and four million. I, I thought I saw that. Um, um, right. It cost hundred and four million to make, um, and sadly, you're looking at just like the cost of how much it makes. You still got to think they That's added another. Emotional, they still though, yeah. There's like yeah. A hun- an extra hundred and fifty million. The Meg Two had to make. It cost the Meg 140 million to make, but they have to pass 200 million to at least break even, to now be good. This is not even talking about making a profit yet. Yeah. Come on, Rasa, watch Blue Beetle, <laughs> man. Watch Blue Beetle. Watch Blue Beetle. Rasa, come on. <laughs> and the four dollars thing did help Blue Beetle a lot, but it's kind of hard to beat Gran Turismo because mm. that was that did really well. Um, and so. I was wondering because they're at 81 million. Mm. They're still 24 million off from just that. Do you think it deserved the box office it got? And do you think James Gunn is actually going to bring Blue Beetle back again? Because he said he would. Yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's all about a bottom line. And if Blue Beetle flopped, I doubt he's going to try to do a Blue Beetle 2 anytime soon. So I guess to start it off, I think they deserve a little more but at least to break even that, mm-hmm. that's what that's what i'm hoping for that's what i i, I mean I'll, obviously i would hope that for any movie, obviously yeah. but especially for for blue beetle i hope that they break even because that's at least what they deserve yeah because mm-hmm. they had a a the, the strong enough idea and a strong enough like i don't know i, I just think that that movie is really cool with the idea and the people so i hope that they break even but I feel like James Gunn will bring Blue Beetle back, even if they don't. Mm. Just because, one, he already said it, and two, I don't know. I feel like the character is intriguing enough, and, you know, James Gunn is well-known to use characters that aren't very well-known. True. Yeah, so okay. I feel like he would want to keep expanding with it, at least mm. to some extent. Mm-hmm. Maybe not in a solo movie just yet, but at least to to build his world a little more. Like, put him into another movie yeah. instead yeah. of giving him a second one I'm already. I'm curious how James Gunn will, you know, It'll implement. Be very implement uh, yeah. Maybe it might switch him up just a little bit just to fit into James Gunn's, like, you know, mm-hmm. thing. But I would look forward to it. I, I right. think um, I, I also hope that they, you know, that they break even. If they don't, that's totally okay, too. But I don't know, man. I, I, I know I plan, like, uh, I'm not sure if, because I know I, oh, that's another question, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying that, yeah, I will show this to my family, dude. Yeah, yeah for sure, but for sure. I think, I, I, and, I, and I, I hope it breaks even. I, I, I don't really think so, sadly, because I'm like, if this is, what, week three now? Yeah. If this yeah. week three, September Equalizer 3 is about to come out with Denzel Washington, <laughs> like, like, it's the new, it's fall season now. They going against horror movies at this point. You think uh, you could do this to me? You think? <laughs> but do you think it's different with like um, like superhero movies that are part of like an actual like big like you know either Marvel or DC? Because even though they do flop, don't you think they're still gonna like want to make a second regardless? So it's, so it's different when it's like a standalone like let's say the Meg. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I uh, I believe that as Jason said, Blue Beetle is gonna show up at some point, but I think this flop. Has allowed them to say, "I'll bring him back," but he's not yeah. coming in anytime soon. True, yeah. he's not coming in for like maybe two to three years, uh, just because James Gunn has a very if his his Superman legacy Ooh, thing I'm that's so coming out. For we all are. 
If that is not what we think, because this is supposed to be, we're here. Yeah. If James Gunn is a make or break, if he fails, it's done. People are like, if James Gunn can't do it, why do I care? I'll stick to the Batman and Joker movies and call it a day, right? right. But like, but like, if James Gunn can do something and make this kill, Blue Beetle will show up at some point because they will have to bring in Young Justice. Mm-hmm. They will have to bring in... And listen, th- I, this is important to me as well. And as to you guys, mm-hmm. if we want to play any DC characters right. ever, we have to pray this does well. Right. Because there is no investment in DC, really, unless James Gunn saves the day here with this Superman thing. Mm-hmm. If this Superman thing breaks our mind, welcome to the league. Because now Marvel has some competition for once. Just saying, um, James Gunn. Just I don't. have the red hair for Wally West. I got you. <laughs> I got you. And James Gunn, uh, you know, Static Shock. I'm here for <laughs> that as well. I'm sorry, but there is no one in this world who would play Static Shock better than this motherfucker. Right That's now. right. Hey, look That's at him, bro. Look, look at me. Look at this guy. Hold on, wait. Oh, guys, I did it. I, Look, you I, did, it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Shark if, not the shark if, if you get static shock one day, we got to go back to this damn clip. Oh, dude. This Hell is yeah. it, bro. Oh, yeah. I would literally be like, guys. <laughs> it's me. It's me. <laughs> Hold it. Um, but no, yeah. It's just, I, I, I honestly, um, although I did not like his acting, I liked the upbeat like personality that character has Mm -hmm. i do like his powers yeah his powers are very unique it's It's like if you so uh one thing that they were inspired by was the injustice game yeah uh they took a lot of the fighting stuff Mm -hmm. from his from the ults of the game and dude he literally can form his hands into these it's like watching green lantern but if it was at a on a physical body level and it was morphing and i'm just like but they're all these alien it's like ben 10 in a way yeah Um, dude and and, yeah yeah, and, and and i'm just like that's really cool. Even even the suit. Looks even like the one suit. Of ben 10's yeah, movie. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And look, I loved it when the suit started speaking Spanish in certain. Yeah. Like, I was like, I was like, I was like, oh shit, <laughs> it's getting <laughs> real. It, like now, now, okay, all right. See, that would intrigue That's me for a movie I wish number they two had for, for the, the movie for, for the for movie longer. for longer. That, yeah, that, like that already the symbiosis between them. Yeah, man, like, that would have been so sick. To it would have been awesome. Of. Yeah, mm-hmm. dude. And 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 I I I do before I ask them what you guys would rate this. Um, I do want to say because we forgot to mention this, the villain, the guy. I really enjoyed how they showed his backstory. Yeah, that was that was um, really powerful. Girl was boring. No, I don't even. I didn't ask her as a villain. I didn't ask her as a villain because she was just fucking useless, dude. Like, yeah, she was just there, bro. Like, she was just, no, she was just like she didn't the, even do anything, bro. Like, nothing. it was it was pointless. Like, like, but him, like, showing that he's been like a victim of this yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Um, is is and and sadly his 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 story got cut in a way to me because I'm like this is once again another superhero trope. Of, this is movies of Frankenstein of a bunch of superhero movies where yeah. the first movie is always them fighting a villain that the has basically the themselves. same yeah. powers as them, just like an Ant Man, another Iron Man, Iron Man like Spider-Man. they just like they just they have a it's just the it's just the trope. All right, guys, last thing, what are you rating this? Out of ten. Ooh, ten being ah. goaded, one being <laughs> Okay. Right, so I would rate it a solid seven. seven. Explain the seven. Ah. I don't think I thought you would say that number, honestly. Yeah, yeah no. I, I gotta be realistic. I gotta okay. be realistic with it. Like as much as I love the family and the the powers and like the fighting, all of everything about the store about the movie. The story is what kind of killed it for me, and yeah. like the villain, and how I wish they expanded more with the with the main villain guy and the the symbiosis between Blue Be- the Scarab and Jaime. I, if that was more prominent in the film, I probably would have rated it more. But to be realistic, I would give it a solid seven. Solid seven makes sense. What do you? That's uh, a good rating, bro. Dude, no, honestly, I I agree with you. It is a seven. And I, I can't, I was going to rate it lower, honestly. I was going to put it at, a, a, at like a five and a half, maybe a six, because I did fall asleep the second right. time. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, be fall, I don't be falling asleep like that in movies. Um, but I think the fact that I had certain scenes I liked, 
I understand the importance of this movie. Mm-hmm. I also like the family aspect that they did do. Yeah. Um, and I just like the uniqueness of at least Blue Beetle. Don't touch my fucking shoe. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> Don't touch it, fool. Don't touch Don't it. Don't touch me. Hey. Um, I'm cooking here. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but, like, I think those are reasons enough for me to be like, okay, seven. It was okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, would I recommend this? Honestly, no. I don't think I would recommend this uh, because I feel like there are just better movies to recommend get that. Get to that. my friends that I feel like I they should watch. Would I recommend this as support to just get more movies out? Because that is also a thing that people do as well. Yes, mm-hmm. because right. the goal is to just get more movies. Right. So then that way you can be like, we don't give a fuck about this movie because there's mm-hmm. more out, out there versus like, we need this to be it because we only get one. Right. Um, Vamos compadres. Vamos hurry up. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't know if I'd really recommend this, but I'll give it a seven. Yeah. It was cool. All right. Well, here's my rating. Man. Uh-oh, fuck. Oh, if no. he starts oh, with no. that, he did this oh, one. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. What are you doing? Uh, well, okay. I'll tell you straight up. From from the very get-go, I, I heard about this, the production of this movie from a dear friend of ours. His name is Miguel. Miguel Avila. Uh, he, yeah. you know, he, he was, like, very early on in, in college, he was over here like, uh, I really want my manager just to, you know, get me an audition just to be, like, just to at least say that I was in, like, like I at least auditioned for Blue Beetle. I was like, that's kind of cool, man. You know, get your, do your right. thing. And I, like, but that's how I got int- introduced into what Blue Beetle was. I'm like, what the fuck mm. is this, you know? And then I started doing a little research. I was like, oh, he's a Latino, like, uh, um, basically superhero. That's kind of cool. And and the whole thing with, like, Chapulín Colorado, man. Like, he was the, like, I I'm, I'm, I appreciate that he was uh, in, tr- or, like, he was, I introduced, what is it? Um just shown just shown in general yeah. just shown in general in, yeah. inside of the film because Chapulín Colorado is necessarily like one of the first Mexican Mexican superheroes that we kind of had you know yeah. Yeah. you can say yeah, that at least sure. and if there's one huge thing that kind of towered over everything that necessarily makes me say this is my rating for this movie mm-hmm. because it's like hey dude I was I, I was expecting this movie to be a flop and uh, money wise, I guess it was, but just story wise, like I thought this was gonna be garbage. Mm-hmm. I thought this was not gonna be a good movie. I, I was, I was kind of like now looking forward to watching it. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be that kind of movie. It's like, oh fuck, you know, like it's like saying all this fucking shit about like, oh yeah, Mexicans. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh yeah, it's. Ugh. But I watched the movie, and if there's one specific scene that I, that that took me, and I was like, dog, here it is. It's the. The essence of like, we're, we're all talking about this family stuff, right? Yeah. And the fact that he couldn't see his dad pass away, he was removed yeah. from that. Mm. Yeah. He, you know how fucking close family is, especially yeah. in, in that, in that, in that, in this story. And he wasn't able to at least, he was able to grieve later on, later on in the story, mm. but he wasn't able to like at least see his dad pass away right. and do that with his family. That's something yeah. you can never have. Yeah. So that, and with that, it's like, man, that, that shit hit me yeah. hard. And that shit made me cry. Mm. That's crazy. And I, I was not For expecting sure. any of that. It's like, Interesting. Yeah, these feelings no. just arise in me. It's like, what the yeah. fuck? So how am I, how am I going to say that? Yeah, although, although there's many things in this film that I did not like, there are moments where I was like, hey, I got to put out a 7.2. Okay. And that's it, man. Okay. I, this nigga went all the way, <laughs> went all the way around Yo, just to say he would have said it. Yo! Yo! I'm actually crying. <laughs> this man, Alex, gave us a full Oscar speech of how powerful, <laughs> how tear jerking this scene is. Bro like, said 7.2. Like, nigga movie. gave him a C. Here's our like, damn movie. That movie <laughs> 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 for my rating of Mech 2. Dude. <laughs> This dude, yo, I'm sorry that you guys literally just got j- blue blocked. Motherfucker, yeah, I, 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 I was I expecting love. a 10. Oh, oh man, no, on. 7.2, fool. <laughs> Y'all were expecting the best? Nah, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was I, like, I he was not, like, <laughs> I am not gonna bias bias rate this. I am not gonna bias rate. Not gonna bias my daddy's rate. Not you gonna heard it right here, folks. You heard it right here. I am not gonna. This bias guy is rate. not a biased guy, guys. No, He's not a biased guy. Uh, well, you heard it here. 
seven seven and seven point two with the tear on the side. Uh, that's gonna be us for Blue Beetles so far. I want to thank Jason Woo! for being here. Yeah. <laughs> you did a fantastic job. Thank you appreciate for being it, on the show. It, yeah. And we will see you guys next time when we're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles! <laughs> 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 <laughs>